<clears throat> okay, hello everybody. We are about to get started. We are doing our animation club today. Um, and you're very, 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 very welcome. This is me, Gavin Malloy. I will be joined by Owen Connolly as well. Let me turn my camera a little bit. Um, Owen will be doing most of the animating with you guys today. So I'll just say a very quick hello um, here now and introduce you to what you're going to be doing and then we'll hand you over to Owen. Um, so for me, um, before we do all that, just to talk about why I love animation. I love animation. It's definitely, animation is definitely one of my favorites because it's, it's fun. You can do so much with it. You can animate literally anything from a, a short, funny thing to a whole big long story that you wrote to even something you want to, you want, you want to submit for school for a project. Like it can be fiction, nonfiction, absolutely anything. And it, you just always get really fun results. So uh, I've animated everything from a sunflower growing to a bees flying around it to actual little short movies. So yeah, I love it. So today we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of animation. So we'll start by having a quick look at Tech Club itself. We'll look at what animation is. So Owen will be looking at this with you. Um, we'll look at the layout of Cloud Stop Motion, which is our animating platform of choice uh, for today anyway. It's a great platform. Uh, we're going to make, of course, we're going to make a short animation together and we will give you a bit of a challenge at the end. So animation obviously is a very complex thing. We are focusing on the basics today. So we're, we're really going to get you guys into the core principles of what animation actually is and how you do it and then get you animating. So it's going to be lots of fun. Um, in the bottom right of your um, of your uh, uh, screen, you'll see a little chat box. Please feel free to put any comments or questions in there. I will be uh, there to uh, talk with you guys throughout while Owen is speaking as well. So you'll have both of us and anything that really, really needs his attention and that's best explained live, he'll do. Otherwise, I'll just give you a response by text um, on the chat box. So join us there as well. Okay, so a quick look around. As you can see by our little friend, the builder, um, we aren't, uh, Tech Club is still a little bit under construction. It goes live in January, so it's 99% there, I guess, but little, just a few little bits and pieces. You know, we love it, so we want everyone to know that, you know, it's not quite perfect. So um, we don't want you thinking this is perfect and this is, is as good as it gets, because little few small imperfections like here, for instance, um, the information isn't here on these courses. Some of the courses need to be updated as well, but most of it is exactly as it will be. Um, you have your progress hub here. The idea is that you can build up a certificate over the course of a whole year with us. As you choose your, your different courses, you'll see my goal here goes up. Uh, some of them are worth 10 points. Some of them are worth five points. I can also get bonus points for getting reviews from, from people. Uh, lots of different ways to get my points and move up toward my end of year certificate, which could be pass, bronze, silver, gold, or gold star. Um, so it's a year journey to get there. So we don't want you just looking at your score here. We have this, you can see your current progress. You'll know at all times if you're doing well uh, from day to day to achieve your target. So big green happy face here it means you're doing great. Uh, means you are on track to get your, your gold or whatever certificate you have aimed for. Um, and then you'll see all your other stuff down here. You can build up your e-portfolio. You'll be able to review feedback and uh, reviews and, and what course you selected for our different kinds of course. Uh, power hours, mini clubs, uh, be smart. And they are all in here as well. So that's, this is where you check your, or choose your different ones. These are all your live courses. Uh, these are ones, power hours are ones you can do two of these a month and you'll leave these yourselves. Uh, and you'll see, you'll have a quick browse after. You'll see we really cover you know, the full breadth of everything you might want to do. And really importantly for you guys, we're always listening to you as well. So if there is something you don't see there that you want, let us know. Um, the Be Smart courses will be there as well. They're just some simple um, courses for staying safe online. Uh, and of course, as you go, 
because it's a full year until you get your certificate, uh, we get badges for reaching milestone points, for finishing modules, finishing mini clubs and power hours, and giving and receiving reviews. So as you go, as you engage with your friends, and as you add friends here um, and interact with them and you know, use our discussion board because it's available 24 seven. We're here with you all the way through uh, as you interact and as you progress, you'll get lots and lots of badges. Okay, so let's, um, I've moved my camera in the way of part of my screen, so I'm just gonna dug around it. Um, did you do, so we are in Tech Club Live today, which is where our animation course is. And Owen is going to be taking over there now, I think in one second, I guess. Indeed, over, Owen, it's over to you, over with you now. Okay, perfect, thanks Gavin. Um, so I'll just share screen here, first of all. Um, one and um, perfect so <clears throat> as gavin was mentioning there my name's owen and we're just going to have a quick look today at the basics of doing some stop motion animation uh, using cloud stop motion um, and as gavin mentioned and um, this is just a very basic look at it today but hopefully by the end of the session uh, you'll be able to make a complete animation and um, a complete stop motion animation so what we'll do is we'll work mainly off this user guide here. Hopefully everyone has that open in a, on, on a separate tab. If you don't, um, I'm not sure if you've already copy and pasted the link for it, Gavin, into the chat box. Just going to do it right now. All right, perfect. There Thanks, we go. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, so Gavin has copy and pasted the link for this page into the chat box. Uh, so if you can, make sure you have Cloud Stop Motion open in one tab and then um, the user guide open in another. So you'll be able to switch between the user guide and the application uh, like I'm going to do as we work through the lesson. So I'll just go down here a little bit. And as we were saying today, it's just an introduction to animation. So what will we be doing in this session? So we'll be learning how to set up the device correctly for animating, which is hugely important. Then we're going to learn how to take and review a photo because without photos, there is no stop motion animation. So that's probably the most important part. And then we're actually going to practice doing some animating. So just to get us started, I thought we might just have a quick think about what animation actually is. So you may have seen an animation before. You can probably think of some that you've watched on TV or maybe an animated movie that you saw. So loads of programs like The Simpsons or movies like Up and um, other Disney movies re require an awful lot of animation. They might be examples of animations that you've seen in the past. So if we just have a quick look here at an animation, and now this one is called Steamboat Willie. So this is the first ever uh, Mickey Mouse animation that Walt Disney created. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if you want, you can click on this link here to watch the video. I actually have it open on a separate tab just to make sure we don't have to watch any ads. So if you want, you can click uh, the link here and watch the video, or I'm going to show it on the screen now. So this is uh, the first ever Mickey Mouse animation called Steamboat Willie. And you can see there, uh, it's obviously very old and very, very basic. But basically, all this is, is a series of probably hundreds of still images that are just played very quickly one after the other uh, to make it look as if Mickey Mouse is moving. So just to keep in mind, everything you're seeing there is just actually a still image being played very, very, it's just a series of still images being played very, very quickly one after the other to create the idea that the character is moving. Uh, and that's what we're going to learn how to do today. And obviously you can come back and watch the entire video here at any time because it's in the user guide, but I'm not going to watch the whole thing today because we want to get started. So I'm just going to close that there and go back to the user guide here. So the first uh, part uh, that we need to cover is how to actually set up a device for animation. So this is very, very important because um, a lesson I've learned is that how you set up at the start is going to impact hugely on how your final animation takes uh, or how your final animation turns out. Sorry, if you have the camera too close to your stage or if you have the camera too far away or you don't have the right camera, it's very, very difficult to get it to work. So we're going to focus on looking at how to set up a device correctly. First of all, so if you're on a PC or a computer uh, and that has no forward facing camera, you can use a webcam. Now, that's actually what I've done today. And hopefully anyone tuning in has as well. If you haven't, don't worry about it. We'll get to a solution in a second. But if I turn my camera here, you can see how I've set up a, uh, 
tripod camera here and it's pointing down at a nice flat section of my desk um, where I'm going to do most of my animating. So it's just set up on a tripod and it's just pointing down at a nice flat, clear area on my desk where I'm going to be able to create my animations. So that's probably the best way to do it. No problem though if you don't have an external webcam. If you're working on an iPad, you can set that up to animate as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into cloud stop motion here and actually show you on the camera how you can set your iPad up. So I have my iPad here and I'm sure you notice on the back of your iPad, you have the camera. So what you could do is, is put your camera flat down on the table and slide it over to the edge and have the camera pointing off the edge of the, of your desk. So that it's pointing straight down at the floor. And then what I could do is, is animate on the floor and then have my iPad there to take pictures. So that's another way of doing it if you're on a smart device or if you have an iPad. So that's just quick. Uh, just, so that's just if I just go back to the user guide here for a second, sorry. Uh, that's just a quick look at how to set up uh, your device. And obviously, as I said already, getting it set up at the start is very important because it's going to have a huge impact on how the rest of your animation uh, sets out or turns out. So if you have an external webcam, that's great. However, if you don't, uh, you can just set your iPad or your smart device up like I just showed you a second ago. So once you've got it set up, then what you can do is uh, is actually open cloud stop motion. Now, some of you might have done this already. No worries if you haven't, though, because we're going to do it now. So there's actually a link here in the user guide. If you just click on this open cloud stop motion link, it'll bring you off to the site itself. And for today, you don't need to have an account. Remember, we're just learning the basics of it today. So you can just click on this red start button. And what will happen is it will bring you, hopefully, into where you can create an animation and to make a new one you just click on new project and that'll open up your animation screen for you there so i actually have two cloud stop motions open now but i only need one so i might just close this one i had that open already just in case it didn't work and um, and you can open up a brand new project so i might just tilt my camera down a little bit so i don't get any of them wires there because i want my stage to be nice and clear so hopefully now at this stage, everyone should be in cloud stop motion with their nice clear stage in front of them ready for animating. So you'll notice that's just the top of my desk there is my stage. And you'll even notice I have the uh, um, a line going up the middle. That's just where my desk is split in two. But remember today we're just using, um, we're just practicing. So the stage doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need any fancy backgrounds or anything. So now that I've got cloud stop motion open, I'm just going to go back to my user guide here. And the first thing we're going to look at is very simply is just how to take a photo within cloud stop motion, because as I keep repeating, without photos, there is no animation. Remember, it's a series of still images played very quickly one after the other. So the basis of the whole thing is the pictures themselves. So if we don't have any pictures, we don't have any animation. So what we're going to do first is just practice how to take a picture in cloud stop motion. So if I just reopen the app here and I have my stage there now I'm just going to use a car a toy car as an example you can use whatever you have at home but what I'm going to do is, is just place this right in the center of my stage where I can see it nice and clearly I'm going to make sure that I don't have any wires or anything around in the background on my stage now I have a small little issue with a shadow here but you can fix that as well if you're at home uh, you can try and make sure you don't have a shadow it's not going to cause me too much trouble and to take a picture of whatever is on my stage i just click the big red button here that says capture frame so i just click on that and it's taken one picture of my uh, object there and you can see it on the screen if i want to have a look at it i can just click on it so i have a nice clear photo uh, with nothing in the background and that's really really important because you need to be able to see uh, the object that you're trying to animate so if I just go back to the user guide here and our first activity is just for you guys to go ahead and just take a single photo of whatever object you're using. So I used a car. It doesn't have to be a car. It can be uh, whatever you happen to have at home. Uh, it could be a pencil, a rubber, uh, anything that's on your desk. Remember today we're just practicing the basics so you don't actually need any exact props or backgrounds or anything, any object you have will do. So if you want, you can just go ahead and place it right in the middle of your stage and just take a good quality photo of your object. And I might give everyone a minute just to try that. I imagine everyone will probably get that done quite quickly, uh, but it's no harm just to give you a minute to have a practice at it. And then we'll move on to part two.
And don't worry, I know this is a very basic taken, a simple photograph of something. But again, as I said, it's the basis of all animation. And we are going to move on to uh, more fun stuff in a minute. But we have to be able to take a photo first. Okay, so I'd say everyone has probably managed to do that at this stage. So what we might do then is move on to part two. So what we're going to do now is that we've learned how to take a photo and learned how to set up our device for animation. We're actually going to start to animate. So if I just go, uh, or I won't go back to Cloud Stop Motion just yet, I'll stick with the user guide for a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate our object by taking 15 photos of it moving across the screen. And that's how we're going to create our animation. So if I go back to Cloud Stop Motion here, you can see down here that I have the picture that I took a second ago. Now, I, I don't actually want this picture because it's not going to be part of my animation. And my car is going to start off here at the side of my stage, not in the middle. So I'm going to get rid of this. Now, deleting photos is a hugely important part of animation. And we'll come back to, to it in more detail in a few minutes. But just to show you quickly, I'm just going to click on the frame I don't want and go up to here. This is called the selected frame menu. And then I'm just going to click on the bin to delete it. And now you'll notice that I have no images. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to bring my car over to the side of the screen and I'm going to begin to animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a series of 15 pictures. OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the car very uh, I'm going to move the car very slightly after each picture to make it look as if it's going across the screen. So I might start it off here and I'll take one picture and then I'll move it and take another. That was probably a bit too big, to be honest. Smaller movements there. So they take a third one uh, and a fourth one. And I'm going to go all the way across the screen until I have 15. Now, you'll notice that I'm making sure to take my hand away before I snap the picture. You want to make sure you don't get your hand on in the image because you don't want it in your animation. So what am I on now? Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And remember, the smaller the movements, the smoother the animation is going to turn out. So do try to make them small movements. You don't want them too big. So uh, let's see, 13. Oh, and I got my hand in that one. So I'm going to have to get rid of that one in a minute. But that's fine because it's a good example of how I can delete an image. So I'll come back to that in a second. So I've taken 14, 15, and I'll just go ahead and take 16. You guys are going to take 15 in a second. I know 16 pictures. So you can see along the bottom of the screen here, I now have 30, 16 different shots of my car. So if I want to play this to see how it looks, I can click on this little button here that says jump to the start. So it'll bring me all the way back to frame one. And then if I click the play button, we should hopefully see my car drive across the screen. So let's have a look. OK, perfect. So um, and yeah, just before we go any further with that, just one thing to notice is if you do happen to take a picture of your hand by accident or something appears in your background that you don't want, you can just go ahead and delete the frame. So you can see here in frame number 13, I've taken a picture of my hand, which I don't want. So again, I can just click on it, then go up to our selected frame menu here and just delete that frame because it's going to ruin the animation. So now I've deleted that one. And if I play my animation all over again, you'll see the car hopefully drive nice and smoothly across the screen with no picture of my hand. All right, perfect. So our next activity then is to go ahead and get the object that you took a picture of at the start of this session and see if you can animate it to drive or move all the way across the screen like I did. So try and take 15 different pictures of it. And again, as I said, make sure that they're nice small movements after each. So after each picture, uh, move your uh, object a tiny little bit, because the smaller the movements, the smoother the animation is going to turn out at the end. So try your best to make them small movements. So I might give everyone a chance. I know some people probably followed along and did it in real time with me. Uh, but just in case anyone didn't get a chance to try it yet, I'll give everyone some time now to go ahead and animate their object uh, to move all the way across the screen like I did just there. So maybe take a couple of minutes to try that. And of course, if anyone has any questions, uh, don't forget to pop them into the chat box there uh, if you're stuck and hopefully we can help you. So I'm actually just going to check the chat box here. 
Right, so it looks as if we've no questions so far. And I will just wait for a couple of minutes because I know taking 15 photos and moving the object between each one does take a good bit of time. Might just go back to the user guide here actually so you can have a look. I'll leave the challenge up there for you. So remember you want to try and take the object that you're using and animate it across the screen, animate it to move across the screen by taking 15 shots of it. Uh, Maybe wait one more minute and then we'll move on to part three. And don't forget to play it as well at the end, of course, because you actually want to see the end product of what you've done. So make sure to play it, have a look at it, see how it looks, and see if there's any shots that you don't want in it, because uh, you might have to delete them if you need to. All right, so just give a few more seconds. Okay, so I think we'll move on to part three now. So hopefully you've been able to animate your object all the way across the screen. So now we're gonna move on to part three. And as I've covered already, uh, not every shot in your animation is going to be perfect. And sometimes you might accidentally take a picture of your hand or there might be something showing on your stage that you don't want to. So again, it's hugely important that you're well able to delete the shots that you don't want. So we've already gone through how to delete it. Uh, remember, you just click on one of the frames and then go up to the selected frame menu here. It looks like a little movie roll. And then you just click on delete and the, the image will be gone. So deleting is a really important thing to know how to do. So what I want everyone to do next then is go ahead and delete those 15 shots that you just took. All right. Now, I know it's the first animation you've done, but we're going to move on to something a little, a little bit different in a few minutes. And we're not going to need all of those 15 shots. We're going to start a new one. Uh, and actually, it's going to be part of today's main challenge. So the first thing I want everyone to do in the next activity is delete the 15 shots that you just added in. And I'm going to model how to do that in a second for you. So just hang on a second and then I'll show you how to do it. And then once you've deleted the 15 shots, I want you to try and create a new animation. So in, except in this animation, instead of the, your object driving or moving across the screen, we're going to try and get your object to go on a journey, maybe to an imaginary shop or the petrol station or the zoo or something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just learning the basics. So your imaginary shop or zoo could just be something like um, a box of cards or a phone or a phone charger even, which is what I'm going to use. You just need an object and you just need to pretend that it's a shop or a location for your object to drive or move to. So that's what we're going to do next is create an animation of your object going on a journey and ending up at a, an imaginary shop or somewhere like that. OK, so I'm just going to swap over to cloud stop motion here and actually give you a look at how to do that. Now, first things first, I'm going to get rid of these 15 shots like I just mentioned. So I think the easiest way to do it is or the quickest way. If you come all the way back to frame number one and click on it and then go up to the selected frame menu and click the delete button. And then what will happen is when what when scene one is gone, scene two will come back into its place and it'll make it very quickly. You'll be able to very quickly delete them all. So scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, scene five, th these are all getting deleted. So I'm deleting them all until I have no images left. So I've get, gotten rid of all 15 of my images and now I'm going to start my animation again, except this time, as I keep, as I've mentioned, the car or the object is going to go on a journey. I'm going to end up at a location like an imaginary shop or a school or something like that. So on my stage here, I'm going to put my car over in the bottom corner where it's going to start off. And then I'm going to bring my phone charger here onto the stage. 
and I'm going to pretend that the phone charger is a shop and I'm going to get my car to drive to the shop. Okay, so you'll start off here. So I might take one image here and then another one here. And there's no specific number you need to use here, just however many it takes to get your object to complete its journey. So five, and remember I'm making very small movements here because you don't want to have big gaps in your animation. You want it to look nice and smooth. Oh, so I got my hand there. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that one. All right. And another thing to point out here is just while I see it, is you'll notice whenever I move the car, there's like a faint outline of where it was left behind. So that's called an onion skin. And basically the purpose of that is, is to show you where your car or your object was. All right. And that's important to know, because if you know where it was, then it makes it easier to move it on to the next location and make the animation look very, very smooth. So I'll take another one here. And then I'm going to slight start to turn my car. So it pulls up at the shop. Right, again, just trying my best to make very small movements. All right, and nearly there. And eventually the car will pull up beside the shop. So this time I use 17 images. So remember for this part, there's no specific amount of images you need to use, just however many it takes to get your car to go on its journey. So now if I press this button and jump back to the start, and press play hopefully it'll look like my car is driving to the shop so let's have a look so off it goes hmm. now i think i got my hand in there somewhere did i maybe in scene number two or three or actually um yeah let me see so again i could just go back and look for whichever frame my hand appeared in yeah it was seen it was a uh, uh, frame number six my hand appeared in so i'll just delete that one so it's actually a good example. If you ever get your hand or something on your stage by accident that you don't want, you can just go back and delete it. Okay, so this is pretty good. It's not it's not as smooth as I would like it. Maybe maybe a couple of the movements were a tiny bit too big, um, but you can you can yours will probably be better than mine to be honest. You just want to have it so that the car is going on a journey. So if I look back at the activity here, so very simply, you just need to create a new animation by first of all, deleting the 15 shots from the previous task and then going ahead and creating a new animation of your object going on a trip or a journey to the shop or a zoo or a school or anything like that. So I might just give everyone, I know some people, again, I know I keep repeating this, some people probably followed along in real time and did it with me, but maybe other people were listening to it to see what you had to do. So what I'll do now is give you a couple of minutes to go ahead and make your new animation. You want to get rid of the 15 shots that you did have and go ahead and make a new one of your object going on a trip or a journey. And I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to try that out. And I'll just have a quick check of the chat box here while we're waiting. All right, so there doesn't appear to be anything there at the moment. So I'll just hang on maybe for one more minute and give everyone a chance to get that far. And then we'll move on to part number four. And of course, important to keep in mind today is just to learn the basics. So you don't need a perfect background or perfect props or anything like that. You can see I even used a phone charger and pretended it was a shop. So uh, you don't need any specific tools or anything for today. It's just kind of use what you have to try and learn some of the basics.
Okay, so I think we'll move on to part number four. There doesn't seem to be anything coming into the chat box there either. So I'll assume everyone's getting on okay. Um, so we're going to move on to part number four then, which is looking at a couple of different bits and pieces you can do in Cloud Stop Motion to improve your animation. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to hold a frame. Okay, so if I just go over to Cloud Stop Motion here, first of all, and jump to the start and play my animation, you'll notice that it goes very, very quickly. All right, there's not a whole lot of time for the viewer to get ready and see what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my animation a hold frame at frame number one. And basically what that means is it's just going to slow down and it's going to wait for a second before it, it moves on. So to do this, I just need to click on frame number one. And then again, go up to the hold, or go up to the selected frame menu, sorry. And you'll notice there's a little button here called hold frame. So if I click on that, it's going to bring me to this box and you'll notice that it has the number 12 in it. Now, the reason the number 12 is there is because cloud stop motion plays 12 frames per second. So if you're, if basically a simpler way of explaining is if you have 12 frames in your animation, it's going to last for one second of actual time. OK, so we need to do a little bit of multiplication here. So if I want my frame to hold for two seconds at the start of the movie, then I need to multiply 12 by two and put 24 in here. And basically what that means is the uh, my animation is going to pause for 24 frames, uh, which is two actual seconds, and then it'll start to play. So if I just click OK, you'll notice that the first 24 frames of my animation are now highlighted in yellow. Uh, and basically what it means is, is that they're just going to hold on the screen for two seconds and then my animation is going to start. So if you have a look now, if I play it, you should notice a pause at the start. So let's see. So you'll notice it doesn't move at all and then it goes. All right. So if I try that once more just to show you. So I play it. It holds still for 24 frames and then the animation starts. And it's just a nice way of slowing it down and giving the viewer more time to see what's going on. So that's how to hold frames. So if I just go back to the user guide here and we'll just have a look at adding maybe titles to the movie. Now you can add titles and credits. I'm only gonna get you to add titles first and we'll come back to the credits at the end. The problem is once you add the credits in, it's very difficult to continue animating. So you wanna make sure you only add them in when you're definitely finished your movie, but we will add titles, okay? So I'm just gonna back, go back to Cloud Stop Motion here. And obviously if you think of any book you've ever read or any movie, but uh, maybe a DVD uh, you've ever seen, the title usually goes on the front or at the start of the movie or the book. So we're gonna put our title at the start of our animation. So I'm just gonna click on tile number one or frame number one, sorry and just go up to the big capital T here. So you can see T for titles. So if I click on that, it'll bring me into this section. Now you'll notice there's speech bubbles, credits and other bits and pieces, but for now we're just worried about titles. So if I click on them, uh, it'll add a title into my animation. And at the minute, this is called my animation. You can obviously change what this says. So if you just double click on it, you can change the title if you want. So I might just add in the word first, because this is my first animation. OK, but it's not my very first animation, but it's just to give you an example. OK, so you would call it my first animation and you'll notice now when I play my animation, it shows the titles first and then it actually goes through the animating that I've done. So it makes it look a bit more like a movie. Now, you'll notice if you're looking at the screen, when I add my titles in, what it, what the app does is it takes all of my frames and it compresses them into one big blue block here. OK, but I can still see them very simply. If I want to see each of my individual frames, I can just double click on the blue box and there they are again. All right. So I have my title at the start and then I can see each of my frames here however many of them there is. I think I'm up to 64 at this stage. So I can see my titles and then all of my different frames. Okay, so our next activity then is, and as I mentioned at the end, if we've time, we might come back to the credits. It's just, as I mentioned, once you add the credits in, it's very difficult to add any extra frames if you want. So you need to make sure you only add the credits in when you're sure you're 100% done with all your frames. And I don't think we are yet, so I'm not gonna add in credits. I might do that at the end. So our next activity then is, is see if you can use hold frame and see if you can get it to hold on the first frame of your animation for 24 frames or uh, 
or two seconds, 24 frames or two seconds. And then also, once you've got it to hold on your first frame, then you can go ahead and add a title. So that's the next activity then. So see if you can use hold frame on the first frame of your animation uh, to make the animation pause for two seconds. And then once you've got that done, see if you can go ahead and add titles into your animation. And I'll just give everyone a couple of minutes to try that. And of course, uh, don't be afraid to ask any questions in the chat box if you're stuck. I'll just have a quick look at it here to make sure nothing's come in. Okay, and then once we've got this done, then we'll move into our final challenge for the day, which will be a bit more advanced um, animation involving maybe a couple of extra characters. And just you have the activity on the screen there as well. And hopefully if you've opened the user guide in another tab, you'll have the activity there as well for you to see. And if you if you already have the challenge done, uh, you'll probably need another object for the final challenge uh, to act as a second character. So if you need to, you can grab something off your desk or pick something out you want to use there. If you're if you have time and you're just waiting, you can pick out an object to use as your second character. But of course, there's no rush. Uh, take your time doing the stuff from the last activity. And in a minute, we'll move on then. Right, so just last few seconds now for this part and then we'll move on to our final challenge for this session. Okay, so I think we'll move on to the final challenge for today then. Uh, and I'll just go through it here on screen and actually maybe do a small part of it with you in cloud stop motion. But again, this is a challenge. So we want to try and leave a good bit of it for you to do yourself. But we just have a quick read through it anyway. So, so far we've learned how to create a basic animation, delete unwanted photos, and we've learned how to hold frames. So now we're going to go into today, today's challenge. So basically what this involves is we're going to try and get a second car or character to meet the first car at the shop, okay? And once they've met each other at the shop, uh, then we're gonna try and get them to hold frame, or we're gonna try and get them to pause and have a conversation for uh, a couple of frames, and then hopefully get them both to drive off in different directions. So if I just go over to Cloud Stop Motion here, now I'm not actually gonna animate it because again, we want you to, leave, want you to try and have some of this to actually try yourself, so, if I just scroll to the end of my animation here and hopefully get my camera back. All right. So basically, if I just use my hand and show you what's going to happen in the animation, you're going to hopefully animate it so that both of your characters arrive at the shop and then they're going to pause and maybe talk to each other for a couple of seconds or a few or a couple of frames. Sorry. So they'll meet each other at the shop. They'll hold frame there for a few seconds to talk to each other. And then they're both going to drive off and are not drive off, but the car will drive off and the character will walk away in opposite directions until they're both off the screen. OK, now I obviously did that with my hand there. But what I want you to try and do as part of the challenge is to animate that. So have it so that your car and your character both meet each other at the shop. They hold frame for a couple of seconds to have a conversation, maybe. And then they both drive off in opposite directions or move off in opposite directions. And then if you get that done, 
I'll leave it up on the screen here. If you get that done, you can add credits at the end. So if you have time, you can add credits into your movie uh, the same way you added the titles. So if everyone wants to go ahead and try that uh, as the final challenge, and I know that'll probably take a couple of minutes because this time you actually have to animate two different objects uh, and you have to animate them then to move off in opposite directions at the end. So that's going to take a little bit more time. And of course, as I keep mentioning, if anyone has any questions, don't be afraid to put them into the chat box and hopefully we can answer them for you. chat box here make sure I'm not missing anything and remember try and make them small movements i know it's a little bit more it's especially difficult when you've when you're moving two objects at the same time but try and make it so that there is there's small movements um so that the animation comes out nice and smooth to be anything in the chat box. Okay, and just while you're working away there, I realized there's just one other element that you can add to the animation as well to make it even more detailed, and that's a sound effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into Cloud Stop Motion here. Um, and if anyone's waiting, you can follow along, or if you're still working away in your animation, that's fine as well. But up here, there's a little speaker icon uh, with a green plus on it. So if I click on that, it'll bring me to an audio menu and I can record a sound. I can upload a sound file from the computer, but the easiest thing to do is just to import sound from the library. So if I click on this blue cloud, it'll bring me to a library of sounds. Okay. Now I obviously have a car in my animation driving. So I think a car sound would make the most sense. So I can just search for car and then you'll notice there's a sound effect for car driving. So if I want to use this, I just click on it. And then it gets added to the menu here. And if I want to put it into my animation, I just drag it down and drop it along here. Now, remember, we only want to have this playing when the car is actually driving. That would make the most sense. We don't want to play when the car isn't driving. So I'm not going to put it right at the start of the movie because I don't want to play in when the titles are on. So I'm just going to start off and drop it here. OK, now what you'll notice will happen is the recording will be way, way longer than your animation. OK. And that's perfectly fine. All you have to do is cut it. So over here on the right hand side, there's a big magnifying glass. So if I use this and zoom out, it'll make it much more easy for me to see where my recording is in relation to my actual animation. So you can see here, all of this here is wasted because it's longer than my animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the end of it and drag it all the way in until it matches up with my animation. And then the only time 
driving sound effect will be playing is when my car is actually moving. And that's what I want to have happen. So you can see there, I've matched it up so that it only plays during my actual frames. Okay, so if we jump back to the start and play it, and off it goes. And then my sound effect is playing while the car is driving. So it's just another little detail you can add to the animation to make it even better. If you don't get that much done today, that's perfectly fine. And remember, after the webinar, uh, you can stay on Cloud Stop Motion and work away on it for as long as you want and have your user guide open. Uh, so it might be something that you might want to add in at the end, uh, but it's just some, it's nice thing to be able to add in to finish off the movie. But if you don't get to it, that's fine as well. Okay, so I might just hang on for one more minute then in case anyone's just wants to add in sound or anyone's just finishing off their actual animation. So we just wait for one more minute and then we'll finish up. So let me just check this here. I don't think there's anything coming in. No, no questions in the chat box, Alan. So, All clear there. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so I think if everyone said, I think we'll probably wrap it up then there, Gavin. Um, yeah. Because uh, yeah. as, as I mentioned, if anyone wants to keep working away on their own cloud stop motion by themselves, they can do that with their user guide there and they can finish it off if they have to. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty thorough. Um, no questions have come in. I, I think everybody has, uh, has has kept up and is making their animations. And, and and like you said, there's a lot in in mastering the basics. You guys, you know, you have the challenge. You may not be finished yet, or may not be perfect. That's obviously totally fine. That's just that's that's how how it is. We're experimenting and having fun here. So, yeah, stick with us. You have access to that lesson for the next week. Um, we look upload today's webinar onto the archive as well. So where you click to join live today, later on tonight and tomorrow, that will be, uh, it'll be a video of, of, of today's session with Owen. So you'll be able to listen to everything back again, but you probably won't need to watch it all again if you watched it all live now. Um, probably the the guide itself will be enough for you. Um, so, so do come back in, do feel free to delete your animation we made today totally and just come back with a clean slate maybe different characters even design a background you know just have a little bit of fun with those basics and then come come join us in january we're going to get get into all this in a lot more detail and um, how to really build up a scene how to really build your characters write a story and actually make a, a proper uh, animated movie um and little bits and pieces like deleting frames and moving things around, technical bits and pieces that Owen couldn't really go into too much detail today. We'll obviously do all that as well, but jump into all the fun stuff as well. So yeah, join us there. And Owen, still no questions in the chat box. So I think everyone's happy. So I think we can wrap it up okay, and just say perfect. thank you very much to everyone who joined us. Yeah, thanks uh, everyone for tuning in. Hope to see you again. And I will just shut this down. Uh, where are we going to? And okay, thanks again, everybody.